Hi and welcome. In this session, we look at research problem formulation. My name is Moyami Kehuba of Institute of Finance and Related Studies. In this area, we are going to look at, uh, of course, we are going to introduce, then we look at sources of research problem. We look at factors that we consider in selecting a research topic, steps in formulation of a research problem, and then statement of research problem. Let's start with a brief introduction. What is research problem? Problems in research are, un are unresolved questions that call for an investigation. While we are formulating the research problem, we require to carry out considerably, considerable preliminary work. We need to have considerable knowledge and logical analysis of the problem. It entails asking previously unanswered questions. It also entails stating clearly one, the research objectives and hypothesis or research questions as may be, defining precisely all key terms and concepts and describing the research procedures to be applied. In other words, what you mean by research problem is trying to look out those areas that have remained unresolved. So, what are the sources of a research problem? There would be number one, personal experience. There will be your own observations, questions, which have got no satisfactory answers and thus suggests they the are research questions. It could be previous research from which you identify the gaps which appear to justify additional research. For instance, you may look at a paper that was written on macroeconomic factors that influence stock market returns in Kenya. If you're an Ugandan student, the fact that study was carried out in Kenya, that is a gap. We are talking of macroeconomic factors influencing stock returns, but are those the only factors that would influence stock returns? No, that then would be another gap. We could look at current social and political issues and even medical issues like COVID. You may want to get to gain more knowledge about these recent changes. How has COVID-19 affected stock market returns. The other source of literature would be reading books and articles on your area that you're interested in, and they'll give you insights on various areas that you can carry out research from. The other would be deduction from existing theories. And you may either want to confirm or to challenge the existing theory, practical situations. Your day-to-day -day work may suggest the need for an area of research to unveil, to unravel, or manage a new situation. Currently, the learn, all learning, most learning is being taken on online. Do we let have an effect on student performance? What effect does it have in our forms? because mainly we are doing it on our homes. Is it being affected by us allowed and so forth? Others would be research themes. You are called for 
a conference. Of course, they'll give you a theme that you want to address. Your area of interest, it will be another one. And also advanced graduate star courses taught in universities and other institutions of higher learnings. What are some of the factors that you don't want to consider when you are selecting a research project? Foremost, it should be something that you're interested in. Since research is time consuming and involves lots of work, if you selected a topic that does not interest you, it may become extremely difficult to sustain the required motivation to complete it. And that's what happens to most graduate students in Kenya. They finish coursework in record time, but they take 10 times longer the time to complete the project. Magnitude. Do you have sufficient knowledge on the research problem that you want to undertake? And if magnitude is too wide, you should narrow, narrow down your area to something which is more manageable, more specific, and more clear. And the area you choose, you must, must be an area that you can manage within the time and other resources at your disposal. You should also consider how are you going to measure the concept of the study? What will be your indicators and how will they be measured? For instance, how effective is home-based care on COVID containment? So how are you going to measure that? How are you going to measure effectiveness? So you must be clear on what would determine effectiveness and how it will be measured. You shouldn't use concepts that you are not sure of how you are going to measure them. The other thing that you need to consider is your level of expertise. You must have adequate knowledge on the area that you want to study on. Even if your research supervisor will assist you, you'll do most of the work by yourself. So you must do something that really you have expertise on. The good thing is that you don't do your research until your last paper, your last course. It's actually your last course. Uh, and the assumption is that you'll have gained a given level of expertise. How relevant is the subject area that you are taking? How relevant is it to your uh, profession? Is it going to add to the existing body of knowledge? Is it going to fill some gaps that were left by past studies? Or will it be useful in formulating policy? Is data available? We talked of talking of data. And uh, you must consider ethical issues, private information, informed consent, and all that. So what are the steps that you engage in in formulating a research problem? Number one, you must identify a broad field or subject area of interest. This really should not be a problem because number one, it should be something related to what you're studying on or something related to your profession. You should avoid topics that requires you knowledge that you don't have. And you should choose an area that you know you'll get enough material on. You'll have to carry out literature review. Are you going to carry out of a study that you're not going to get sufficient material? Once you've identified the state, the blood area, you dissect the blood area into sub areas. You've decided it's consumer behavior. How do you break it? All right. And for you to do that, you really need to read lots of literature. You'll have to talk to those who might find use of the findings and so forth. And when you dissect the blood radio, it helps you clarify the problem so that research can focus on a few questions. You obviously can't start everything. If 
we had a broad area, for instance, domestic violence. What are some of the areas that you don't want to cover in domestic violence? What is the extent of domestic violence in a community? What is the impact? What role has COVID-19 played on domestic violence? And so forth. Uh, step three is to identify a sub area that most interests you. You may cancel out those really that you don't need there. You obviously can't study everything. And when you are selecting, most probably would have to do elimination. Uh, and you have to consider, number one, the time you have for the study, your level of expertise, and other resources that you need to undertake the study. Please note that this sub area will form the topic of your study. Step four is to raise research questions. And as to whether this should be step four or step five, relates it dependent on institution to institution. And research question would be, what is it I want to find out in this sub area? All right? If you've got so many questions that you need to answer, you can again narrow them. And then step five is to formulate objectives. I, I said uh, step four, formulate questions could actually be step five. Some institution starts with formulating objectives and from the objectives, they raise questions. Now, you should come up with the main and specific objectives. Which you grow out of research questions. Or if you started with objectives, from objectives you raise questions. And the only difference is that the way they are written. Eh? Of course, questions, they are questions, they have got question marks. Uh, uh, but objectives, you transform them using action-oriented words to establish, to determine, to investigate, to measure, to explore, and so forth. Eh? Objectives are goals that you set out to attain your study, and they inform you as a leader what you want to achieve throughout the study. And they could either be main objective or sub-objectives. Your sub-objectives and main objective will determine how you classify your research, the research design, and so forth. Remember, the objectives must be clear, complete, and specific, so that they communicate to the leaders with to the, uh, the intention of your research, and they should leave no reason for ambiguity. If you are you have a descriptive. Then the question should be descriptive as well. Eh? And they should even mention the organization and location because you're trying to describe. For instance, what types of treatment program are provided by, say, Baghdad the hospital to COVID-19 victims in Nairobi, Kenya? Or what is the opinion of the community about home-based care in Kenya, all right? So when you identify the organization at its location, it makes you study to be on that, all right? Again, if your study is correlation in nature, the wording should be, of the objective should show that, to ascertain the impact of migration on family roles to compare the effectiveness of different teaching method on comprehension of students. If again, you want to test hypothesis, the wording of the main objectives in, should indicate the direction of the relationship. What is the relationship between youth and employment at increase in street crime? What is the, the, the uh, if is an increase in youth and employment resort to increase in street crime and so forth? The next, the next step is to assess your objectives. And you must consider time, resources, and your expertise. Here, you need to ascertain the feasibility of achieving them through your research project. Double check. Go through it. Are you enthusiastic about the work? Do you really have enough resources? 
And if the answer to any of them is no, then you need to reassess your objectives. All right? So how do you define the research problem or the statement of the problem? It should be clear. It should have a clear description of the problem that you need to investigate. You should show the research gap that the researcher intends to close. A good statement should convey specific research problem. Ideally, it should have a format. It should have a part that describes the ideal. How should things work? Then, what is the reality? And finally, the consequences. And all these give your research purpose. Okay? There are several formats of writing the research problem and so forth there. You may start, you can start with some facts uh, and say how, is, how that is affecting the population. The, another technique would be an A but A statement, whatever, what I've described. This is the ideal, this is the reality. Also, what are the consequences? And should be clear, direct, and unambiguous. And you should use neutral ones to investigate, to examine. And the statement purpose would also suggest the design of the study by indicating the target population, the variables, and the relationship among variables. So that's the end of our topic today. I'd really like the video, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you.